Hey everyone, welcome back to Codeheim. In today's episode, we're diving into WebSockets with Go using the Coder WebSocket package. We'll build a simple echo server and a client to interact with it. Let's get started. WebSockets allow full duplex communication between a client and a server over a single long-lived connection. Perfect for real-time applications like chat apps, live notifications, and more. Now, why choose Coder WebSocket over other WebSocket libraries? Here are some key benefits. Simplicity. The API is clean and straightforward, making it easy to integrate into your Go projects. Performance. Optimized for high performance with minimal overhead, which is crucial for real-time applications. Built-in features. It has built-in support for features like automatic ping-pong handling and connection management. Secure defaults. By default, it handles many WebSocket protocol quirks, reducing potential security risks. Context. Aware. Native support for Go's context package helps manage timeouts and cancellations effectively. These features make it an excellent choice for both beginners and advanced developers. Let's begin by installing the package. Let's copy this command. Now that the package is installed, we will implement the echo server. We have structured the code in two directories, server and client. This is the basic structure of the server code. This looks exactly like a net HTTP project. In the main function, we register echo handler with the HTTP server using HTTP handle func and assign it to the slash WS root. Next, we print a message to the console to indicate that the server has started and is listening. Finally, we start the HTTP server using listen and serve. If the server encounters a fatal error, log.fatal will print the error and stop the program. Now, we will implement the echo handler. The echo handler function will handle WebSocket connections. It takes two parameters. W for the HTTP response writer and R for the HTTP request. Inside the handler, we accept the WebSocket connection using WebSocket.accept. We pass in the response writer and the request, along with options. The options can be nil if you don't want to pass any parameter. For our testing, I want to skip origin verification. For this purpose, we have set insecure skip verify to true. After trying to accept the connection, we check for errors. If the connection fails, we log the error and return. Now, we defer the connection closure with close. We set the status code to WebSocket.status normal closure and an error message. This ensures the connection is gracefully closed when the function exits. Here's where the magic happens. A continuous for loop to keep the WebSocket connection alive, listening for messages. Inside the loop, we use con.read to read incoming messages. This function requires the context of the request. It returns the message type, the actual data, and an error if something goes wrong. We then check if the connection was closed using close status. If it's not negative one, it means the connection has been closed, so we log the event and exit the loop. Of course, we handle any other read errors here. If there's an issue, we log it and terminate the loop. If everything is fine, we log the received message to confirm the server got the data. Now, to complete the echo functionality, we send the message back to the client using connection.write, passing the same message type and data we just received. And yes, we also check for write errors. If something goes wrong, we log the error and exit the loop. And that's it. 
we've built a simple WebSocket Echo server in Go. Now we will build a WebSocket client in Go that connects to our Echo server. Inside the main function, we establish a connection to the WebSocket server with WebSocket.dial. The first argument is the context. Let's create a variable holding the background context. This context will be used throughout the WebSocket connection lifecycle. In the dial function, we pass the context, the server URL, and anil for any additional options. This returns a connection object, type of message, and an error. If the connection fails, we log the error and terminate the program. Once connected, we defer the closure of the WebSocket using connection.close, specifying WebSocket.status normal closure to ensure a clean shutdown when the program exits. Next, we print a friendly message to the console. This lets the user know the client is ready to send messages. To read user input from the terminal, we create a new scanner using buffio.newscanner. We pass standard input as the parameter. This allows us to capture each line typed by the user. Now, we enter a loop which continuously reads user input using scanner.scan. The loop terminates on an interruption. Inside the loop, we get the user's message with scanner.text and store it in the message variable. Then we send this message to the WebSocket server using connection.write. We again pass the context. We specify message text to indicate it's a text message and convert the string to bytes. Of course, we check for any errors while sending. If an error occurs, we log it and exit the loop. After sending the message, we wait for the server's response with connection.read. This function returns the message type, the echo data, and an error if something goes wrong. Again, we handle potential errors. If everything works fine, we print the echoed message back to the console. This completes the echo functionality. We've just built a simple WebSocket client in Go that connects to an echo server, sends messages, and receives responses. Let's try the server and the client. This runs the server on port 8080. Let's run the client. Now, when we send the message, the message echoes back. In the server, we can see the message was received. This is the message that was echoed back. And that's how easy it is to set up WebSocket communication in Go using the Coda WebSocket package. Perfect for real-time apps. If you found this helpful, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more Go tutorials. See you next time.